Hello, Environmental Policy 2 students. Dr. Conway back for Lesson 9 on Strategic Environmental Assessment. Um, so thus far in the term, we've gone through uh, various tools related to risk assessment of, of chemical products and, and other types of uh, risks, and including, including emissions. And then we went to how businesses assess risk. And then for we went to ongoing monitoring, inventories, and management-related issues uh, as regards uh, toxic compounds, uh, monitoring, inventories, uh, and so forth. And now we're kind of switching towards a, uh, a discussion of uh, policy tools, policy-making tools, of which one of them is uh, strategic environmental assessment. Uh, SCA is essentially a tool to assess the potential type and magnitude of negative or, po or positive and or positive environmental effects that could occur as a direct result of a policy, a plan, or a program. Now, it's important to keep the distinction clear in your mind of what an SEA is relative to an environmental impact assessment. An SEA is a strategic assessment at the policy, plan, and program level. An environmental impact assessment deals with the physical characteristics of a project. And we'll talk about EIAs next week as another policy tool used for designing and fine-tuning policy or project developments uh, based on their risk profile, okay? So the whole point of an SCA is, is that, you know, the assumption is that an SCA can promote sustainability by addressing the cause of environmental problems at the policy source rather than treating the, the symptom after the fact. So it's prevention rather than mitigation. That's the first key issue to remember when you're thinking about SEAs. Um, it encourages consideration of environmental factors early in the decision-making process. In other words, before a policy is actually adopted, plan or program is actually adopted. Um, it, it avoids sort of uh, making a major decision, launching a whole bunch of activities into an area and then potentially finding out afterwards that you've created a series of, of problems. So the SEA considers options and opportunities in the design of a policy plan or program before it gets launched. Okay. And the SEA is also intended to ser serve as a way of looking across policies and programs for cumulative negative effects. Um, see, the, if the EIA, by the time you get to the EIA, it's focused primarily on the project, the physical characteristics of the project, and what impact it's going to have on environment, culture, and so on. The SEA is supposed to take a step back, earlier view, and look, look across policy, program, and plans to determine whether we're building up a whole bunch of cumulative effects that we don't want to encourage in the design of policies, plans, or programs. And these would be cumulative environmental effects. <clears throat> now, SEA is not the same in every country, and in Canada, we, 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 we have all those features of an SEA early in the decision-making process, consider cumulative effects, and, and so on and so forth, policies, plans, and programs being the focus. But the level of decision-making can vary across countries quite considerably. Um, sometimes SEA is applied to new legislation. Um, in some countries. Sometimes it's only applied to, to regulations or, or policies, plans, and programs after legislation is actually being developed. In other cases, uh, countries encourage uh, the widest use of SEA. Canada's use of SEA tends to be more focused on uh, policy plans and programs that are being already being developed or advanced under uh, the general direction or legislative mandate that the government has already put in place. Um, SEAs can also occur at different levels. I mean, in Canada, our SEA focuses on at the policy plan and program design stage. In, uh, in other um, uh, countries, it might actually be done in context with early implementation of the, of the uh, policy plan or program. Or in other words, after a decision has already been taken to advance the initiative, and therefore, it's being used to make sure that in the implementation stage, unnecessary environmental impacts are taken into account. That's not the Canadian approach. We take the approach of the SEA should be done at the policy plan and program design stage. Okay, Scope of the issues considered also varies between countries. Canada focuses on environmental impacts, environmental uh, uh, opportunities or risks. In Denmark, for example, they consider that plus economic and social aspects. Um, and 
So they, in, in New Zealand, they consider the entire sustainability matrix, environment, economic, and social cultural. So they, they have a broader perspective on these things. Uh, so the, the general principles of SEA are the same, but the scope can, can vary between countries, okay? Um, the, the, the approach though remains largely the same. List the objectives of the policy plan or program for the SEA, including the formal decisions that, that, are, that need to be taken and identify the constraints. You know, what, what decisions would be not good, not advisable to take as opposed to others. Analyze existing environmental problems and protection objectives. So that's, that's the comparison across different files to make sure we're not creating cumulative effects or creating policies, plans, and programs that are in direct conflict with other uh, policy plans and programs in the same uh, issue sphere. You're to consider specific options or alternatives for these for for any objectives that the policy plan or program have. For example, there, there might be uh, might be approaches that can be taken to achieve the objectives that have lesser environmental impacts or social and economic impacts. If you're in one of the other countries that I mentioned, um, you are to identify or mitigate uh, or compensate environmental problems. Suggest alternatives or suggest mitigation activities. That, that could be undertaken to minimize the negative environmental effects that any uh, policy plan or program has. Um, and then you are to put in place, and this brings us back to our monitoring uh, discussion of a few weeks ago, uh, you know, you're, you're to establish any necessary monitoring to follow up on the initiative to ensure that the design was in fact having the intended uh, uh, lesser impacts on the environment. Okay. In Canada, the SEA is spelled out very clearly in the Cabinet Directive on Environmental Assessment of Policy Plan and Program Proposals developed in 1990 in Canada. You can, you can Google that and it's a short document, so read it. Uh, and I think it's even in your readings uh, for the week. Okay. Now, you will see in that directive that in Canada, SEAs are required by the Cabinet Directive for any federal government department. If a proposal is submitted to the minister for approval and implementation of the proposal may result in important environmental effects, either positive or negative. If those two criteria are checked off, then a department must do an SEA, okay? And I have some examples of an SEA, I believe I put the one I did for CETA in, in your readings for, uh, for this week, okay? Now it's important for you to understand SEAs because uh, if you work anywhere in government, most levels of government have some form of a strategic environmental assessment process in place. And understanding that is key. But also, if you're in the private sector and you're advancing, you're working for a company that's advancing major proposals with a federal government department, you will, be, uh, you will need to take into account the fact that an SEA has to be done. Um, and that's quite a different matter than environmental impact assessment, which we discuss next week, okay? So uh, take a look at that, make sure you understand this tool. It's not as big or as significant as, as broad risk assessment or as uh, environmental impact assessment uh, and so on, but it is a, an important issue in Canada because the government of Canada takes the SEA process as mandatory, okay? So I'll talk to you again next week. Uh, have a good week and uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.